All right, welcome back to C Programming Skills Using Replit. I'm Norman McIntyre. Let's get started. So we're going to continue on our from our previous video where we started looking at main.c, a uh, part of the introduction, and here we're going to look at part two. All right, so we're back to the same project we were working on in the previous video. In fact, if I click on run, of course it runs, it says hello world from C. Uh, what I want to draw your attention for this new skill is on line number four. Notice that each statement has a semicolon at the end. So we have a semicolon here, we have a semicolon here. So these are executable statements. So after every executable statement, the language says you have to have a semicolon. Now I'm going to remove this semicolon because I find one of the uh, errors you'll have most often when you're, when you're first learning how to write in C code is forgetting to put that semicolon at the end of the line. So I'm going to click on Run. And notice, sure enough, following our technique, we know when you have an error, you look at the file name, well, main.c, look at the line number, line number 4, and column 33. So it goes all the way over to column 33, and it says it expected a semicolon after the expression. So this is an expression and it's expecting a semicolon at the end. Of course, we didn't have it, and we'll get an error. So that will actually be, be a type of error you'll see quite often. Let's do another one here. Say if I left this semicolon off, click on Run. Notice it says there's an error, line 5. It expected a semicolon. So this is nice. It's, it's, it's clearly telling you it expected to see a semicolon right there. In fact, we see it has the little arrow and the, the semicolon. So that'll be... Um, something you can easily fix in most cases. So make sure you understand that when you have an expression, you're going to put a semicolon at the end. Now importantly, notice you're not putting a semicolon at the end of every line. Rather, it's only those where there's an expression. So in this case, that's just line 4 and 5. And we'll learn more about what we mean um, about an expression and so forth as we go through the course. All right, so that takes care of the semicolon. Here's another skill. Notice that line number five is saying return zero. What does that really mean? Well, as your program runs, and it actually starts running right here at line number three, that's what main means, that starts running. Well, at the end, it will return a value. And here's what we mean by return a value. If I come over here to the console and I say, uh, well, first, if I click on run, we see it says hello world from C. If I say echo dollar question mark. Now what this is saying is echo out what was returned from the previous command. And it shows that zero is returned from the previous command. Now let me come over here and say let's return a one. Okay, so let's let's edit it and say we'll go return a one. I'll come over here and click run. And notice the output's a little bit different. Now it says the exit status is a 1. Notice it didn't say that when we had a 0 here. We just click on Run. It says Hello World, and we get the prompt. But as soon as I change it to something other than 0, so in this case, say a 1, we find that it says exit status 1, and it's in red. And the red signals that something went wrong. So the, conven the convention when you write code is that if everything went right, return a zero. Right? Everything went as expected and return a zero. But if things don't go right, return some type of error code. It could be a one, a two, a three, a four, whatever uh, different error codes could represent different things. As long as it's not zero, the system says, well, I'm going to show you the error status and I'm going to show it. Uh, show it in, in uh, red. Now there's another way we can do this. We could say period slash main. This is how you manually run the program from the command line. Period represents the directory that you're in and slash main is the program we want to run. So we ran it. Now running it from here we don't see this red exit status 4 because that's part of running it from here. However if I say echo so back over here, I say echo, oops, uh, 
So echo dollar question mark. Oops. Let me. Um, what happened? You you'll see this. You, you may have caught it on the video. There was a brief moment. It was actually refreshing things here. So let me run it again. So I run the program, and I'm gonna say echo dollar question mark. And look at there. It's echoing the value of four. So when I run this main echo dollar question mark. Oops. Let me do that again. Run main echo dollar question mark. It says we return to four. By the way, it only does it for the previous command that you executed. So when we did this, period slash main, and said echo, that got us a four. But if I say the same thing again, echo dollar question mark, now it's a zero because it's telling us the status of this command. So it's always the dollar question mark is always what is the status of the last command you ran. Let's do one more. Let's say I put here, say, 42. And I clicked on Run. And uh, in this case, if I say period slash main, echo dollar question mark, and notice we've got the 42. So uh, the reason you do this, it allows you to connect multiple programs together, each one returning a given status code. Uh, so in this case, we'll... Uh, for, for most of the times as we go through this course, we'll just leave it at zero. But that now tells you clearly what the purpose of that. You can return a status telling you um, how the codes run or not. So in summary, what we've seen here is the importance of the semicolon at the end of an expression. We also saw how we could do the return zero or return whatever and, and use the echo uh, to see the results over here. So thanks once again for making it this far, right? Step by step, we learn a little more, and there is more to come in the next video. I'm Norman McIntyre. Thanks as always for watching.